and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day nine of the Halloween Craft Countdown 2021. Today I'm going to show you how you can use digital papers in your craft projects. I love using digital papers because there are just so many available to use online and loads of them have commercial use so you can use them in your products that you sell. This is an example and in the background here you see the purple with all of the little patterns on. That is a digital paper that I printed out on my home printer to put in the frame. Now you might be wondering where I got this jack-o'-lantern SVG. It is one of my free designs. It was released for the Halloween Craft Countdown last year. So check out the description of the video if you want to get it. But if you'd like to know more about digital papers and all of the ways you can use them in your crafts, keep watching. First, let's take a look at where to find digital papers. My favorite website to find them is creativefabrica.com as there are loads to choose from and they're really affordable. You can even sign up to their monthly membership, which means that you can then subscribe and download everything they have on their website for no additional cost. If you'd like to give that a try, you can get your first month for only $1 by signing up using my affiliate link, which I'll include in the description of this video. This is a great way to trial out Creative Fabric and to see if you think you'll use it on an ongoing basis. Let's have a look for some digital papers for Halloween. In the search box on the homepage, I'm going to type in Halloween pattern and hit enter. This is then going to show me everything it thinks will fit this, but I've got images, SVGs, fonts, all sorts of things in here. I want to filter this. So in this little drop down on the left, you see it says categories. I'm going to go down to where it says backgrounds and tick that box. And now everything is filtered. So it's only showing me these Halloween patterns. And in fact, now that I've got this filter, I don't even need the word pattern in my search query. So let's just change it to Halloween. It will remember that I'm looking at backgrounds and now I've got even more to choose from. So I can keep scrolling and it's gonna show me more and more designs. It's showing me all of these ones which are quite similar from the same designer, but as you go down, you'll start to see work from other designers and there'll be more variety. If we go back up to the top, you can be more specific. So let's say you were looking for ghost, let's type in ghost. And now we're just seeing patterns that have ghosts in them. But here are my original Halloween choices and I quite like this one, Halloween seamless patterns. Now a seamless pattern means that you'll be able to tie all the patterns. So this is really helpful if you're using the pattern fill um, tool in Design Space, which I'll go through further on in this video, because it means that you're gonna get perfectly tiled designs. So it will show, let's say these pumpkins, if you had a big area to fill, it will keep putting the pattern next to each other, above and underneath and to the sides, and you won't see any seam lines. So you won't see those joins. So seamless patterns are a really great thing to look for. Most patterns probably will be seamless though. So even if it doesn't explicitly say that, it should be fine to give it a go. I'm going to download this paper pack by clicking the download button. Mine says download because I'm logged into my account where I have the monthly membership. If you don't have that, then it will say purchase instead and you can either choose to purchase it for a one-off fee or you can sign up to the Creative Fabrica subscription and then you'll be able to download everything on their site. So I'm gonna click download and just wait for that to save to my computer. Some of these paper packs can be quite large file sizes so they might take a little while to download. My patterns are finished downloading, so now I'm going to click on the zip folder to open it up and have a look at what we've got. Now, we can't actually see the pictures at this point because they are in a zip folder. I want to be able to unzip that folder so that I can access the files. I've just moved the zip folder on my computer somewhere where you can see it, but you'll find to keep yours in your normal downloads folder. The instructions for unzipping a folder will vary based on if you're using a Windows machine, a Mac or a mobile device. I'll show you how to do it on a Windows machine as that's what I'm using. But if you're using any of those other systems, check the link in this description which takes you through to my matching blog post tutorial for this video. And I will include instructions in there for how to unzip folders on all of the different types of machine and device. On a Windows computer, you just need to right click on the zip folder and then press extract all. Choose where you want to save it and then just press extract. This has made a copy of the folder in here. So now I can double click on the new one, 
go into this and now I can see the preview of all of the patterns which I couldn't see before. So that's really helpful because now I know what I've got. So these are designed to be printed out and then used in your craft projects and I'll show you how to do that two separate ways. The first is just to use your computer's normal print function and you can either print by double clicking on one of the images and then pressing print and then you can change all the options in here to however you want it to look. Or you can use a graphic design software such as Photoshop or Canva to um, put the design in and size it to how big you want to make it before you print. Or we can use the pattern fill tool or the slice tool in Cricut Design Space. As I am a Cricut crafter, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Design Space. First, we need to upload the pattern. So click upload. And then to start with, I'm gonna use a pattern fill. So click upload pattern on the right hand side and then click browse to find the file on your computer. I'm going to drag and drop it in. So let's have a little look and choose one. I think I will go for these pumpkins here. And now I can just look at it here to see a preview. You can give it a name if you want to and then press upload. It might take a little while, especially if it is a large file because it needs to upload to Cricut servers. Once it's finished, you'll go back to this screen and it will say pattern upload successful on the top. And now we can use the pattern. Now you'll notice that it hasn't appeared in my recent uploads and that's because pattern fills are different to image and SVG uploads. To access it, instead we need to do something a bit different. I'm gonna go into shapes and choose a heart and just put this on the canvas so you can see. Now to use this as a pattern fill, we need to go up to the top where it says operation basic cut and change it to a print and cut standard. This now means we can click into the color box and under print type, choose pattern. And then this is all of the patterns that you get included in Design Space and it'll also show you ones that you've uploaded yourself. So you can scroll through here to try and find the one that you have just uploaded. It can be a little bit tricky. So you can also try filtering it by the different colors to try and get it to come out. Now it'd be really helpful if Design Space let you just filter by ones you've uploaded rather than showing everything but unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to do that at the moment. And I'm having trouble finding the one we just uploaded. However, quite a lot of these are fairly Halloween-y, so I might just choose one of these instead. I'll just look for a little bit longer. Might be one of these two at the top that aren't loading a profile. Nope, that's Christmas. So you can see there are loads in here that Design Space already has. Actually, there it is, look. There we go, found. <laughs> okay, so that was a bit of a roundabout way and now I've clicked it, it is taking its time to upload, probably because this is a big file. But now you can see it's filled in my heart perfectly with those pumpkins, which means I could now do a print and cut with this. So it will print on my normal printer, then I can feed it into the Cricut machine and it will cut around the edge. If you wanted to change the pattern, go back into the little drop down at the top and press edit pattern. And then you can change the scale. So by making it less, you'll be able to see more of the pattern. And you can also move it about with the horizontal and vertical boxes. I don't need to do that because I'm quite happy with how that's looking. And you can also choose to flip the pattern or rotate it. So if I rotated it by, let's say 45 degrees, all my pumpkins are gonna be at an angle instead of straight on. But I'm gonna keep them at zero because otherwise that'll look a bit weird. So now if I close that out, you can see it's changed to update my reflected changes. So I've now got lots more pumpkins. Pattern fill doesn't just work on shapes. You can use it on images and SVGs too. I believe you can use it on text as well, but I'll give that a try in a moment. First, let's just go into images and I'm going to choose an image just to show you how it works. So let's have a search for pumpkin. 
And you'll want to choose an image that has lots of um, kind of darker areas that are going to be cut out because if you chose something that was just a really thin outline you're not going to be able to see that pattern. So I'm going to click this pumpkin and then press insert and then it works just like it did with the shape. Under operation change it to print and cut standard then in the color box you can change it to pattern, find the pattern, click it and it will load inside the design. And just like before, we can edit that pattern to make it bigger or smaller, depending on how you want it to look. This also works exactly the same for uploaded SVGs. But let's have a little go and see if it works with text. I haven't actually tried this before, so I'm learning along with you. Let's type out my name, and then just like with the image, we'll want to choose a nice, um, thick font so that we've got a good chance of seeing that pattern. Let's get that S filled in. Okay, there we go. Let's try it. So operation, print then cut standard, and then I'll go into the color box, change it to pattern. I'm pretty sure this is gonna work now. There we go, there are my pumpkins, and that looks really cool. However, when you do it with text, you can see it's a little bit hard to see the outline of the letters. So what you might wanna do is um, click your text and give it an offset layer. Offset means to give it an outline. So I'm gonna change this to 0.1 and then press apply. And now it's got that black outline. It's actually much easier to read what the text is doing. I'm gonna click that offset and just take out the little gaps in the A's, but it's not letting me do that at the moment. And that's because it set the offset to be a print then cut layer as well. So we need to change that under operation back to basic cut and I'll change it back to black. And now it's going to let me click into contour so I can hide all, nope, didn't wanna do that. Let's just undo that. I thought hide or contours was just gonna fill it in for me, but it didn't, so instead I'll just click those two little gaps to fill them in. Now you could keep this as a separate layer, so now this will be cut with the Cricut machine rather than printed, but equally you might decide that you want this outline to be part of the print then cut. So if that's the case, select the offset layer, press shift on your keyboard and choose the print then cut layer, and then down the bottom press flatten. And that would join them together so that they are now the same layer. So that was how to use digital papers and patterns in Design Space using the Pattern Fill feature. But I did say there was another way, so let's see how that works. I'm going to delete all these and start again. This time I'm going to go into Upload and I'm going to upload it as an image. So let's press Upload Image and then I'm going to drag my file in here. Let's choose a different pattern this time. I will go for these wavy lines. Now it doesn't really matter which one you choose in here. If you've got a really complex pattern, obviously choose complex. Um, but for this one, it's fairly simple. I'm gonna go for moderately complex. And then hit continue. We don't need to change anything on this screen. I don't know why it filled in the background with a creamy color. I think it should be white. I'm gonna give that another go. Maybe it was because I chose that moderately complex. You see here it's white. Let's go for complex instead. Okay, that time it hasn't updated the preview color, so maybe you should just choose complex. There we go, as you said, I am learning along with you. Now we don't need to change anything here because we wanna use this pattern as is, so just click continue. And then we need to make sure it's a print then cut image and then press upload. Again, it might take a while if it's a large file because it's uploading to Cricut's server. This time, because we've uploaded it as an image, it will appear under recent uploads. So I can click on it and then go insert images and it will appear on my screen as a square. This has come in huge, it's 25 inches. So let's just change it to eight inches so it's easier to work with. So now what we can do is use the slice tool in Design Space to cut this into shapes instead of using the pattern fill. 
It doesn't really matter which one you choose, it's really up to you whichever you find easiest. The pattern fill has the advantage that you can change the size of the pattern. So remember we made it a lot smaller. You can rotate it and have all of those different options. You don't really have that so much here. But if you just want a simple shape or image cut out of a pattern, this can be a quicker way to do it. Let's go into shapes and choose another heart. And then I will make this nice and big. And then to cut it out, I'll press select all along the top. And then this has selected my two layers. If you have more than two layers on your canvas, you won't be able to use select all because the slice tool we're about to use only lets you slice two layers. So let's just say we had other things on the screen. Instead of pressing select all, you'd want to choose your heart, press shift on your keyboard and click the pattern in your layers panel. Now that I have these both selected, I can go down the bottom and press slice and this will cut out the heart from the design. So I've now got my pattern here and I've got this cut out. So this was just another way of getting that pattern inside of the shape. And again, that will also work for images, SVGs and text. Once you've got your patterns looking how you want them, then you can cut them out using the print then cut feature on your Cricut machine. If you're not sure how to use that, check the description of this video as I have a whole other video on how to use Print Then Cut, so I will link to that so you can check that out if you want a little bit more information. As I said at the beginning, you don't need to use these background patterns in Design Space. You could simply print out a whole sheet of them on your computer using your normal print button when you view the image or any other graphics design software. If you're going to be doing a scrapbook page or something that you want to cut square, it can be easiest to do that, do it that way. And actually, that's what I did for the jack-o'-lantern shadow box frame that I showed you at the beginning of this video. The background of that was printed as a full A4 sheet, and then I cut it into a square just using my normal paper trimmer to go into the back of the frame. I really enjoy using background patterns because you might be able to find designs, in fact, you definitely will be able to define, find designs that you might not be able to find on actual printed scrapbook paper or pattern paper that you might buy in the shops. For example, where I live, I never find Halloween paper anywhere. I was looking this year and I found some full patterned paper, which was very pretty, but it wasn't Halloween-y and I really wanted some Halloween patterns to use on my crafts. So because I couldn't find it as actual physical paper I used the digital paper instead and that meant I could choose from a much wider range of patterns and designs and also I could size it and print it and use it exactly how I wanted. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use digital papers in your craft projects and it's given you some ideas of how you might be able to incorporate them in your own crafts. To make sure you don't miss out on any of the other videos for the Halloween Craft Countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Halloween 2021 to sign up for free. And if you do that, you'll also be able to get access to all of the previous day's videos as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.